Deadly shootings involving teenagers just hours apart last night. Yeah, two others back to back last night in Santan Valley, then Phoenix, with 17 year old boys killed in each of those shootings. We have team coverage tonight. Investigative reporter Morgan Lowe's looking into the disturbing trend of teens and gun violence. First, Vanessa arises in the newsroom with more on two communities coping with the loss of very young victims. Vanessa. Yeah, Jared, that first shooting in Santan Valley involves a student from the same school as Preston Lord. You may remember that teenager killed in a beating outside of a Halloween party. Now that same community is coping with yet another loss. A makeshift memorial is growing at this park in Santan Valley, where the Pinal County Sheriff's Office says Jameer Jenkins was shot and killed. Authorities say it began with an argument with another teenager, ending with the suspect pulling out a gun and shooting Jenkins in the neck. Authorities have arrested the 17-year-old shooter, but they are not releasing his name due to his age. The mom of one of Jenkins' best friends told us he just celebrated a birthday. And he was like a son to me, like a son to me. He called me mom when he come to the house and he was to the house almost every day. Good kid. He went to school, got good grades. Get ready to buy a car, his first car. He was excited about that. Um, had a bright future ahead of him. Jenkins was a student at Combs High School where students and staff are still reeling from the beating death of Preston Lord. The school said there is no higher priority than supporting students and families right now. And another shooting in Phoenix has officers searching for the person who shot and killed 17-year-old Mark Leva near 7th Avenue and Southern. Police spent 12 hours at the scene collecting evidence, including dozens of shell casings. Neighbors say while violence is not uncommon in that area, it is disturbing to hear the victim was so young. Yeah, it's sad, like, where he lost his life already, 17-year-old kid, and then... For the family. Police are looking for any information in this case. If you know anything, you're asked to call Silent Witness at 480-WITNESS. And over the weekend, there was yet another shooting in the same area of South Phoenix. A man was killed in what appears to be a drive-by shooting. Several suspects were arrested in that case. Police say they are still looking to see if there was any type of connection between these two shootings. Jared. Vanessa, thanks. We want to bring you more context now on these deadly shootings involving kids and teenagers. They have gone up every year for the past nine years statewide. A troubling trend for families and law enforcement. Investigator Morgan Lowe is taking a closer look at what's behind those numbers. Yeah, according to the Arizona Department of Health Services, the most common cause of firearms injury deaths, which would include child suicides, accidental shootings and homicides, is a gun in the home that was not stored properly, meaning a child had access to the weapon. Each of these dots represents a fatal shooting involving a child or teenager that Arizona's family covered so far this year. It doesn't include suicides. The victims have been high school football players and cheerleaders, children who never got in trouble and were not associating with dangerous people, and yet they became statistics. 59 dead last year alone. Today, we asked County Attorney Rachel Mitchell if parents could face criminal charges if they allowed their children access to a weapon and that child killed someone with it. Some of the things that I would be looking for are, did the parents realize that this child had access to the gun? Uh, for example, if it's locked up, that the child could access it, or if it's not locked up. Um, we want to look at, were they concerned that there was an issue, that this child might act out with the gun? Rachel Mitchell says she's going to ask the legislature how to create a new law that would allow police to take a weapon from a child living at a home if the parents ask the police to take the weapon. Apparently, this is a problem that police and prosecutors are seeing. But Mitchell did not have a good answer when I asked her what is being done to keep guns out of the hands of these kids in the first place.